and Scott, in the, in the years since you founded Intuit, what has changed most in your philosophy about how to run companies in this, in this age of the web? Well, I'd say two things. One, Pierre has covered well this thing that we now call customer-driven development, where, in fact, we had Pierre come to our first developer meeting such as this just to share his insights. And one story he told was of this taking the customer feedback, the user feedback, was that when you were the sole employee, you'd sit there and be on the boards getting feedback all day and then coding the changes they wanted at night. Right. Yeah. But that kind of visualizes the having the customer with you at every step of development. The other one, though, I'd say, is a recognition of just how often I'm wrong. And it's changed my view about the role of leaders in organizations. Peter Drucker, who's probably the longest reigning business expert in the country, writing business books from the 30s up until the 90s. He died just recently at 96. He was Austrian, and I can't do an Austrian accent, but he would remind CEOs, he'd go, well, you know, the bottleneck is always at the top of the bottle. <laughs> and I've really learned he was right on that. The power of the founder or the CEO to stomp out the good ideas and the innovation of the company without even seeing it, uh, it changes how you view your role as the leader. Your role is to moves from being the person who you view as the decider to instead being the person who builds the culture and the values and the capabilities so your people can be the deciders. So there are things we're doing right now that I was against that have been huge successes. And I was dead set against some of them. And I was wrong. And we've built systems so that, that fortunately, the leader's point of view has safety checks on it. And so that good entrepreneurs can get things to market uh, even without the belief of the leader. And that's, without that, we would have made some major mistakes. So I think there was a, my maybe biggest personal learning is learning where the bottleneck often really is. I was trying to think of a counter example. It's the, it's the saying, well, it's the focusing lens is the top of the telescope, but it doesn't really work. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was going to say, actually, that's the great thing about being in a business like eBay, uh, which is so close to its community in some sense that, um, uh, you know, I mean, again, so yeah, the example in the early days, I'm getting feedback from people and I'm coding the changes right away. Basically, the distinction between what's inside the company and what's mm -hmm. outside the company is it's, it's a more permeable barrier. The great thing about that is that, I, I'm always sort of suspected, is that the, the community, your customers who, you know, you're there to serve and, and you're not going to be successful unless they're successful, um, they have a lot more impact on what's going on inside the company so that, in fact, it's sort of a governing mechanism. Like you, you, um, there's only so much damage that a top-down approach can do because you know, we'll make mistakes, and we've made mistakes, and I've made mistakes, and, and, and you know, we continue to make mistakes, but at a, lower, at a slower rate um, uh, at, at eBay. And, um, and the great thing is you find out about it instantly. And you, uh, you're able to course correct and, and deal with that quickly. And it's this new generation of business that has that attribute, I think, uh, that in the old days, it wasn't like that.